Good morning. Good morning. My name is Steve Munkelt. I'm an uh, attorney with uh, California Attorneys for Criminal Justice. The CACJ. It's a statewide organization of criminal defense attorneys, both in private practice and uh, public agencies. One of our mission statements is to preserve and protect those civil liberties which were considered so important by the founders of our country that they enshrined them in the Bill of Rights. One of our activities to try and fulfill that mission is to support rational and effective legislation relating to crime that takes account of the interests of victims and the community as a whole, as well as the, those accused of crime. Uh, another aspect of our service in that mission is to oppose uh, legislation um, or uh, ballot propositions that are not rational, will not be effective, and do uh, run a great risk of diminishing the amount of freedom and uh, civil liberty in our community. We think that Proposition 35 is such a measure. Um, this ballot proposition is the result of a flawed approach to the behavior that it is trying to address. It is entirely unnecessary. And it is so badly drafted that it is um, overbroad to a degree that I think is shocking. And I'll try and give an example in a few minutes of exactly how shocking it could be. The flawed approach is the, the basic simplistic notion that if you pass a law, you solve a problem. And some of the presentation by the proponents of this measure sort of resonated along that, that line as I listened to it. Um, if we can just pass this, everything will be great. The world will be a better place. But the world is much more complicated than that. And uh, you members of the legislature have uh, dealt with that and learned that lesson in some cases in hard ways over the last decade or so in dealing with criminal justice issues. Um, finding that, as uh, Senator Hancock mentioned, that sometimes just punishment, just imposing penalties isn't the most effective way to address a problem. And we have an example from the study funded in the Philippines and the effective efforts done there, which did not focus on criminalization or punishment. They focused on effective ways of managing a problem. <clears throat> the, the bill is unnecessary because, as the proponents admitted, everything that it's talking about is already covered by the criminal law. It's covered by California criminal law. It's covered by the United States criminal law. Not always under the label human trafficking, but it's covered. It's already there. So in a very fundamental way, the only thing they're doing is ramping up the penalties uh, and then adding some tweaks, uh, for example, to Section 290, uh, the registration of sex offenders. And I would respectfully disagree with the legislative analyst's um, comment that um, under Proposition 35, only folks with sex-related offenses would be, would be registered under 290. Very clearly, uh, at least those convicted of extortion under 518, which has no connection to sex or sexuality or sexual behavior or motivation, uh, would be registered under, under 290. So we'd have sex offenders who did not commit a sex offense possible under this law. That's just crazy. Now, I, I said I'd try and come up with a little bit of an example about how overbroad this really is. <laughs> so let's imagine Saturday night date night. We have an 18-year-old boy. We have a 17-year-old girl. Um, they head out to a movie. He buys her movie ticket. He buys her a popcorn. They enjoy the show. Afterwards, he drives her to a romantic location. They share a beer while they talk. They get a little close. They start kissing, a little touching in sexually uh, sensitive areas. And uh, he says, you know, I'd, I'd really like to take a picture of your breasts. I think you're, you're just so terrific. I'd really like you to just unbutton a little. I'll take up my cell phone. I'll I promise I'll never show it to anybody. But he knows that he's definitely going to show it to some of his buddies. So she agrees. She consents. He's facing 15 to life under this statute because he gave her something of value, a movie ticket and a popcorn. Consent is not a defense. Um, this is a coerced event because he used a controlled substance to make her more compliant when they shared a beer. Um, 
and he used fraud by misrepresenting his intent when he took a picture that related to her sexual areas of her body. So under this statute, he's facing 15 to life. And I hope all of you are sitting there saying that's just impossible, that's crazy, but that's how broadly this is written. They've removed the defense of consent. As the proponents said, they've removed the requirement of any force or fear being used. In the more, in the less uh, severe sentencing area of the basic 236.1a section, they've even removed the requirement that there's being anything related to sex. It's to obtain labor or services of any kind. So you could be convicted of human trafficking under certain circumstances for having somebody mow your lawn. This is not a good law. This proposition is going to be abused, it's going to be misused, and it will not be effective in accomplishing what we all hope can be accomplished, which is, as the victims and proponents said, to address the harm that occurs in our community when people take advantage of others. But the world is much too complicated, people are much too complicated to solve all those problems by passing this law. And in fact, what we will do is regress towards the uh, exclusively punitive approach which uh, led to the situation in California where we had roughly 160,000 people imprisoned under conditions that were so even inhumane that the United States Supreme Court had to say that's a violation of the Constitution, you have to do something about it. So as much as we want to help people, this is not the right way to do it.